Hello, how are you doing? I've been meaning to make this video for quite a while now because I want to recommend some of my recent favorite audiobooks. And especially in the past year, I've been talking about how I've really enjoyed getting into the experience of reading audiobooks and especially doing a combination of when I'm at home and able to sit down and concentrate reading a physical book, and but then when I'm out and about uh, or doing some menial task like preparing dinner or folding laundry, I'll listen to an audiobook and I'll sort of combine my reading experience so I get part of it through a physical book and then part of it listening to it through an audiobook. And, and I really like doing this combination. I, I know it's not like the normal thing for people to do. Usually people will just listen to the audiobook or they'll just read the physical book. But uh, yeah, I, I kind of like to mix it up that way and I feel like it gives a slightly different reading experience and I mean just listening to an audiobook gives you a slightly different reading experience from the physical text you know that's not to say that listening to an audiobook isn't reading I, I really get annoyed at that, that argument and I've had some friends like say to me like oh if you're listening to the audiobook you're not actually reading it and I feel like that I mean we've had that argument a lot of times on booktube and it's just kind of ridiculous I think I mean if you're listening to audiobook you're reading it and you know that it's especially offensive to make that argument if you're someone that has a physical difficulty actually reading a book and so have to listen to it instead um, because yeah you wouldn't be able to experience that book any other way so to say that you're not reading it that's 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 not on is it and uh, so I, I especially I got prompted to make this video um, again even though I'd been thinking about it for a while uh, because um, someone commented recently saying that he's had difficulty with his eyesight recently so so wanted to know if I have any audiobook recommendations, you know, not just the text, but the actual uh, experience of, of listening to the audiobooks and the way it's narrated and, and all of that. And, and having read a number of audiobooks this way now, you know, I definitely have a perspective on, on some of them. I think the audiobook experience isn't that good. And, and other ones, um, I've had a really positive experience. So I want to talk about, I think, six books um, that I've had a really positive audiobook experience with and uh, so I'm gonna go through all of them uh, but first I want to say I've gotten a bit addicted to buying audiobooks I mean I have an audible uh, subscription and so I've sort of got audiobooks uh, for a while that way but recently like audible have been having a number of sales and sort of like two for one deals or like you can buy a book for three pounds so my audio book library has been getting quite long and yeah just have lots and lots of books um, which I've been picking up in these deals it's sort of been my way of like doing a shopping spree while at home over the, the past year and a half during the the pandemic and I've just acquired so many audiobooks um, that way it usually means that I, I spend about like three pounds on these audiobooks that are in these special sales which is a really good deal I think but anyway I'm going to get into the books now that I've really enjoyed and the first one that I want to recommend and the absolute best audiobook experience I've had in the past couple years I think is Love After Love by Ingrid Persaud and uh, so I, I did this combination of like reading it at home but then also listening to the audiobook especially because I was reading this as part of judging uh, the Costa Book Awards last year and we did select this as our winner and and the reason this is such a good book like not like story aside I mean it's amazing story about this uh, small tight-knit improvised family of a uh, mother and her son and their neighbor who they're very close to and become very close friends with and and uh, yeah following the story of their life on a Caribbean island but the reason why this is such a great audiobook experience is because the author herself narrates it and because it's in her voice you get the intonations of this Caribbean accent and certain words and phrasing and it just comes across in a way which brings the book to life in such a vibrant and, and vivid way and I, I just enjoyed it so much. I feel like hearing it in her voice the, the humor and the, the sorrow of the heartbreaking bits of the story just come out in, in such a strong way and, uh, and 
yeah, other people have commented on what a good audiobook experience it is as well. And so, yeah, I definitely would recommend this as, as an audiobook, but also reading the, the text if you prefer to read it that way. It's just, it's an amazing book in whatever way, whichever way you, you read it. And so, yeah, I definitely recommend that. And another book that I would recommend that is narrated by the author himself and that I listened to recently is A Life on Our Planet by David Attenborough. And you're probably familiar with David Attenborough's voice if you've watched any of his nature programs. I mean, he has the most soothing, like wonderful voice that just sort of lulls you into this i mean but also makes you like alert to all of the the things that he's talking about and um but but yes yeah, is, is is very soothing and comforting and and wonderful and so it's great to hear the story of his life in his own voice and the way he talks about the issues that he really cares about and and you can hear the passion in his voice as he's discussing these things that these are things that are very close to his heart, these issues to do with the environment. And and so it comes across in just such a, a stronger way. And and again, this is something that, you know, I read some chapters while I was at home and then other chapters, I, I listened to him uh, narrate them. And I'm sure I'll go back and listen to this audiobook again at some point, point because uh, yeah, I just really enjoy hearing his, his voice. Now, a, a book that I want to recommend that isn't narrated by the author, um, but is quite a long book and uh, I, I, and of course, listening to audiobooks rather than reading it, if it's a long book, it, it, it sort of softens the, um, the, the difficulty, I think, of, of actually um, getting to these long books, which we can be a d bit intimidated to start because it's such a long book. And, and just listening to it, you know, it, it sort of makes it a slightly easier experience than um, just reading the physical text. But, um, but something that makes this such a good audiobook experience is because it has not one, but two narrators. Um, so it is narrated by Malk Williams and Sophie Roberts. And there's a number of different characters in the book. And so, um, so you get some characters in different voices and it pretty much um, divides the characters up by gender. So when there's female characters on, Sophie Roberts is narrating it. And then when there's male characters, Malk Williams uh, narrates it. And, and I think that is sort of a good way of dividing the, the narrative of this book. And, um, and yeah, and just the way they narrate it, it um, they, they give slight intonations to the, the different characters that they're doing. So you, um, you are able to differentiate them through that way, but it's not such a performance that it's like you're getting a performance rather than getting the text narrated to you, which is a sort of subtle distinction, I think, in books and in audiobooks and and because yeah it's it's slightly tricky i think you you want to have the i think the book or at least i want to have the book given a slight interpretation for me but i don't want it to be so much a performance that it's like i'm listening to a piece of theater rather than reading the book. And I think that's a yeah sort of interesting distinction to make. And it's it's quite interesting, you know, also when the previous books I was talking about of, of hearing it in the author's own voice, because when the author is narrating it, you know, naturally they have their own ideas about how they mean the text to come across. And, um, and I think it's interesting how um, b that doesn't always work. I think the author isn't always the person best in place to narrate their own audiobook, which is a slightly strange thing to say. But um, but I think it's it's true because writers, you know, they they aren't performers. They are, or at least, aren't always naturally. And so, you know, they um, yeah. I think I, I think authors aren't always best placed to to narrate their books. But sometimes it, it works really well, as in the case of Love After Love and David Attenborough's book. And uh, and it was it's an interesting issue. I was talking in, about with um, if you watched my interview with the author Sophie Ward um, a year ago when she was listed for the Booker Prize, and she talked about how you know she was the narrator of her own audiobook. But this was even though she's an actress, and this is something she's done 
done in the past professionally of, of narrating audiobooks, but um, but uh, but she had to audition for her, her own to to be the narrator of her own book, um, which is kind of funny hearing her discuss that, and and also just the process of being an audiobook narrator. But uh, but yeah, um, the way that Cathedral is. Uh, narrated I think comes across really well and yeah the the narrators who do it aren't um, don't intrude upon the text but more like deliver it in a way that I think is able as we when you're a reader you're able to to sort of feel the text in your mind and and imagine it in your mind rather than yeah just feeling like you're getting a performance anyway i went on a, a slight tangent for that but um but yeah i think it's an interesting issue that comes up with um audiobooks so uh the next book i want to recommend that i don't actually have a physical copy of anymore i used to have a physical copy of it but um it's a book that came out just earlier this year and um it's a novel called before my actual heart breaks by tish delaney um, who's an Irish writer, and it's the story of a woman's life um, uh, following the course of her life and her tumultuous, tumultuous relationship with her husband that she was sort of set up with. It was kind of an arranged marriage rather than a romantic one. And uh, yeah, and, and so... Um, this is narrated by Erin Quinn, um, who is sort of like an actress before she is an audiobook narrator because um, she's most famous for uh, performing in the TV show Dairy Girls. And if you've not watched the TV show Dairy Girls, uh, I would highly recommend it. It's such a funny, uh, but uh, also, yeah, like strangely moving show. And um, yeah, I just I just love it. It's it's so good. And I think this is the only audiobook she's actually narrated. So um, yeah, that's a kind of interesting issue but um but she performs it really well um she she narrates the the story really well and uh yeah and in a way that i thought was really meaningful but also it was wonderful listening to this obviously because um her irish accent and to um and i i personally just love irish accents and so could like listen to them all day and and yeah it's just wonderful hearing a irish story narrated in an irish voice in that way and so um so i i think that's a you know great thing about audiobooks of you know that come from a particular nation to to sort of hear it in the accent of that nation um adds something to it rather than just reading it on the page and you know there will be certain words which are different from or which I might not be familiar with or might be different from the way that I normally use them and to, so to hear them you know narrated aloud in that way um, I, is really special and meaningful and and uh, so yeah I think that's um, a wonderful audiobook and then and for um, classics I would recommend of audiobooks um, and something that I've been talking about a lot in the recent year is the work of Anthony Trollope and uh, and so I did this combination of listening to the audiobook and reading the physical text with all three of these books of both The Warden and Barchester Towers and Dr. Thorne and they all of these audiobooks are narrated by Timothy West and Timothy West has narrated a lot of Anthony Trollope's work and he's written he he wrote a lot of books and so um so yeah he's sort of like the king of uh, audiobooks for Anthony Trollope and yeah just the way he performs them like his his voice equally is I find very comforting but also he delivers the text in a way that I think brings out a lot of the humor of Anthony Trollope's work um, as as well as the emotion of um, his characters and uh, yeah just the way he delivers the story yeah just it um, it, uh, it it really carries you along and and uh, I just sank into these books and really loved the experience of them and and I think it probably would have been the case if I was just reading the physical text I, I probably would have found these books a bit more dry than I, I would having listened done this combination of listening to the audiobook and also reading the text because I've, I've heard the criticism of Anthony Trollope before that they find his work quite boring and but uh, yeah I, I found it really riveting um, listening to this and also reading the text and and there were some chapters which I went back and reread the physical text after listening to the audiobook because I just wanted to get all of the cleverness of of what Anthony Trollope was was doing in the text in this so so if you're looking for a good classic 
books, I would definitely recommend Timothy West's uh, audiobook performance. And a siren is going by, so I'm going to let that happen while I start talking about the last book I want to discuss, which is actually my favorite novel of all time, which is The Waves by Virginia Woolf. And uh, I have very definite opinions about this because there are, at least from what I was able to find, there are two different audiobook narrations of this novel, and I would definitely recommend one over another. And I'm going to give an example, uh, we'll play in a, uh, for you an example of why I feel this is the case. So, um, so I've talked about this novel before. It's my many times, actually, because it's my favorite novel of all time. It's such an incredible story of six different characters following their lives from their very early years in schools towards the, the, towards the end of their lives. Um, and there's a seventh character as well, but he sort of fits in in a very special way. Um, and yeah, the, the narrative revolves between their different voices, but you're not getting their thoughts so much as their subterranean impressions, as well as their, their thoughts and feelings about things. And yeah, it's a, it's a kind of experimental book, but it's, it's very done in a very special way. And, and it is a kind of Marmite book in that some people like me, really love it. And then there are other people which uh, don't take to it so well. So I know, yeah, people have very strong feelings about this book. But personally, I think it's the most incredible novel ever written. And I'm sure I'll make more videos about it in the future because it's it's so special. But talking about the audiobook of it, so um, I started listening to the audiobook of it because I wanted to re-experience the book while actually physically traveling around London. And I've talked about this before, like sometimes my favorite activity is just to go on a London bus and travel around the city while listening to the audiobook of The Waves. And uh, because it just gives, you know, I feel like I'm experiencing the book while witnessing some of the physical locations she's talking about. I mean, it's, it's not so much like Mrs. Dalloway, you can actually trace the physical paths of this and uh, through London, um, where as in the waves, you don't get so many actual physical London locations, but you do get some. And but also, yeah, she just gives an overall impression of the city um, when the uh, when the children become adults and they start living and working in the city. And so you get um, not all of them, but some of them do. And so, um, so yeah, uh, so yeah, I started listening to it that way. And I was listening to the audiobook by Francis Jeter. And I actually got that on CD and then transferred it onto uh, my iPod at the time. And so was listening to it uh, that way. And uh, so that sort of shows my age that I was sort of burning um, uh, CDs onto my iTunes library in order to listen to these things. And so, yeah, that, that's the first audiobook I was listening to. And I love that audiobook narration. I think Francis Jeter just gets the style of the writing and gives it across in such a, a wonderful way. And, um, and so I'm going to play you a bit of her, the, the audio sample of her, of her narration to give you an idea of it. So I'll just turn the sound up and turn this on. Ooh, is it gonna I see a ring, said Bernard, hanging above me. It quivers and hangs in a loop of light. I see a slab of pale yellow, said Susan, spreading away until it meets a purple stripe. I hear a sound, said Rhoda, cheap chirp, cheap chirp, going up and down. So that gives you a uh impression of, of her style of narration. And I love the kind of slight flintiness of her voice. Um, I, I just feels like that gives it a special meaning. But also, she narrates it in a fairly level tone, like she doesn't vary her, her voice for the different characters that she's moving between, but is just uh, giving this impression of of the, the meaning and the, the emotion of the text. But then this was also narrated by Julia Franklin, and you can also get the audiobook um, narrated by her. Uh, but she gives a very different style of narration. And so when I first joined Audible, um, I, I had difficulty with my iTunes library. And so I wasn't able to access this CD that I had burned onto my iTunes library. And so I thought, oh, I'll just 
by the waves again through Audible, and I didn't even look at who was narrating it, and um, and so I didn't realize at first that I had bought this Julia Franklin narration, and she narrates it in a very different way. So I started listening to it, and I was like, "What is this?" Um, because I think if you first listen to this through the Julia Franklin narration, you'll have a very different impression and idea of the book than if you listen to it through uh, the Francis Jeter narrated version. So I'm going to play you the Julia. A Franklin version because, yeah, you'll hear the difference very quickly, I think. Said Bernard, it has beads of water on it, drops of white light. The leaves are gathered round the window like pointed ears, said Susan. A shadow falls on the path, said Louis, like an elbow bent. Islands of light are swimming on the grass, said Rhoda. They've fallen through the trees. The bird's eyes are bright in the tunnels between the leaves. So you can hear that she gives these different intonations to the different characters. Um, she, she does sort of different voices for them. And that just doesn't feel right for me, even though they are different characters. And I, I realize that's, you know, that's a sort of acting choice um, that she's making to, to do that. But I don't think the text calls for that distinction between the voices, because part of the point of this text is it constantly revolves between all the different characters. And they kind of blend together and when you first read the text because it's written in this highly lyrical poetic language um, that it, it will probably all blend together to you and all the characters might feel a bit the same but the more you read the text the more you realize that these are very different personalities and they do have sort of commonalities and they have this connection with each other but they are all very different people and so I understand the choice of giving their voices these different intonations but I I don't think it's the right choice because that is sort of the point of the text. They're supposed to go together. And yeah, I just feel that um, that Frances Jeter, she gets that sort of lyricism and that they all sort of flow together and um, and and that is that that is kind of the meaning of the text and that we are all sort of connected in this way and that we are all human beings and and though we have very different personalities are sort of systems of thought and trains of thought, especially as we progress over the course of their life, of our lives, have these crossovers between them. And I feel like that that's what Virginia Woolf is sort of doing in the text. And so, yeah, I just find Francis Jeter's version of the text much more meaningful and profound than, um, than this other narration. So if you are going to listen to the audiobook of the waves, that is, that is my suggestion for this. Um, I, I would definitely recommend Francis Jeter over over that that other um, that that over audiobook narration which just completely spoils it for me and and I can't listen to that without it sort of grading on me uh, but sure you could see as I, I was just like oh couldn't couldn't listen to that um, so so that is my suggestion for that so uh, so yeah I'm I hope you take up some of my suggestions I would love to know if you listen to these books um, and how you find them. Um, or I'd love to know if you have any good audiobooks suggestions of of books that you know you would suggest not just for the text but but for the style of the audiobook narration how that comes across um, to, to you and and if you think there are any particularly good ones that you would recommend to me because as you can see from my shopping spree I've, I've been buying a lot more and um, so I'm looking for some other good audiobook suggestions as well so please make those in the comments below and uh, and yeah I will speak to you again soon thanks for watching happy reading everyone bye bye